All right, guys, Fuller coming to you with another video. Shout out to the whole LDBC. Uh, if you want to, you may like this video. If you like the content you see on this channel, please feel free to subscribe. Once you subscribe, you know, you'll become family. You know, you'll be able to reach out to me no matter what. And, you know, because I like to interact with the people, you know, who knows? We may, um, you know, cross paths one day if you're in L.A., especially if you're planning on being at the Spence uh, Sean Porter fight. But anyhow, um, you know, I wanted to talk about something, man. Um, so recently, uh, Torino Johnson, uh, he just captured the WBC silver middleweight belt. And, um, you know, I forgot who he fought. He fought a UK guy, you know, someone who they actually said was going to win that fight. And they said that Torino Johnson was going to lose that fight. However, um, you know, tables turned. I think he got a stoppage and he won the fight. Now, um... Right now, Torino Johnson, he's 35 uh, years old, but I guess he's a young 35 years old. His record is 21, two, and one draw. And uh, after the fight, I found it kind of interesting that, you know, he was calling out all the big names at middleweight, you know. Um, he was calling out the Canelos. He was even calling out the Charlos, you know. Uh, you know, he he wanted smoke, you know. Uh, but the question remains, you know, is he really ready for that smoke? You know, um, if, if I was like someone like Triple G, which, you know, he's someone I dislike. He's someone who, for me, is the biggest fraud in boxing. Then this is a fight that you take. You know, this is a fight that perhaps will will be something that you can, you know, utilize to get some kind of ground. Although a WBC silver belt is kind of like fool's gold, you know. I mean, a lot of these Infinity Stones are just used for like, uh, like one percent bargaining when it comes to negotiations in these fights, you know. And so, I guess you can say a WBC silver belt is one of the weakest links in that uh, bargaining. Now, the thing is, is that um, you know, Serino Johnson, man, like he kind of surprises me because like with his style he kind of just has this like come forward style you know um the thing is about his style is that he um you know i want to say that he he there's no back foot action with him you know um so that's right up someone like triple g's alley you know, I'm not saying that Triple G will win, you know, I mean, I, I mean, don't get it twisted, you know, I'm still going to go for the Torino Johnson, you know, I'm best belief, I'm going to go for him, but it's interesting, though, that he, you know, he's one of those middleweights that not many people are talking about, and, and, and for, you know, for valid reasons, I mean, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he's promoted by Golden Boy, and we know how Golden Boy feels about pushing black fighters. I mean, even the interviewer of uh, Golden Boy did not look too uh, pleased that he captured that half a strap, you know. And, and, and that's just the reality. I mean, we, we can do the history of Golden Boy. I mean, Golden Boy does not like black fighters, you know. Um, I mean, even right now, uh, we got a fighter on Golden Boy who, you know, it, it makes no sense that he does not have a fight date. You know, this guy should be fighting regularly. 
and that's uh, Rashidi Speedy Ellis. You know, that guy should be having getting fights all the time. You know, but unfortunately, because of his promotion, we don't see him. And he doesn't get the fights. You know. But anyhow, um, you know, Torino Johnson, it would be kind of interesting how he matches up against these other middleweights due to the simple fact that, you know, as surprising as it is, you know, he has, uh, he is a, a student of the Cuban school of boxing, but, you know, with his style, you kind of wouldn't be able to tell because he's like just a really come forward pressure fighter, you know, who throws a lot of punches, you know, that's one thing he does. I mean, for the most part, he likes to mix it up in the inside more than anything else. You know, I haven't really seen him fight outside, you know. So I need to look at some more fights from him to see if he does have different layers to his style. But, um, you know, I would say that, you know, he would be a good scrap for, he would be a good stay busy scrap for any of the current middleweights who can't, who are having trouble getting a fight. Like, he would be a good stay busy strap for a Demetrius Andre. You know, he would be a good stay busy fight for a Jamal Charlo. Because when you look at it, those are the middleweights who are, like, really having the most difficulty getting a fight. You know? Uh, I mean, I can keep on beating a dead horse, but, I mean, there's many people who call out Triple G, but he does not want to fight him. Fight them. You know, so he does not give them a fight. You know, so with that being said, he has no problems getting a fight. You know, uh, this would be, you know, a good fight for, um, I mean, I can see Torino Johnson fighting Murata. That, that would be a good fight, too. You know, two come forward guys, you know, who, who are going to bring that, that explosiveness, you know. Um, so, yeah, man. Um, I don't know, like, I have to watch more tape of him to see how he would match up against the current middleweights, but if I were a betting man, I would say that he is, like, kind of like, I want to say, like, a little bit of a level before, above a journeyman, you know, uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean he ain't going to give you good work, you know, that's, uh, let's not get that twisted, you know, but, you know, he was very adamant of calling a lot of people out. You know what I mean? Uh, so, it, it, let's see what happens. You know, it remains to be seen what he's going to do. Um, another thing I could think uh, of happening, you know, is let's not forget the, the guy who's looking in. You know, who, who's the guy outside looking in. In junior middleweight, and that's Erickson Lubin. You know, Erickson Lubin, I mean, like... I think he's having a problem making weight at 154 anyway. What's six more pounds uh, for him to, uh, to move up and take that fight? You know, that would be a good idea for him, actually, you know, because I remember at the last weigh-in, I think he was, um, I think he had to, like, you know, take off everything to make the weight. And that's not, that's not a good sign, man. You know, that's not a good sign at all. So what I'm thinking, man, is that, you know, Erickson Lubin can, like, go up and get that strap, you know? But anyhow, man, that's just a short video, you know. Um, let's see what happens. Let's see what develops, you know. Um, let me know what you think about this Torino Johnson guy. And let me know if you think he's, um, like, if he can compete with the the higher upper echelon of middleweights. Uh full of signing out. Good job.